and welcome to this video lecture note where I'll be talking about one of the common problems when you are creating maps, namely how to focus your map reader's attention on a specific area on the map. The tool or technique that we'll be looking on is called masking. So the idea is that you have your area of attention and then you want to mask out your surroundings. And that can be done in different degrees of advancedness. So in this case, I had a dark green edge going over in a light green, some gradient, and then a wee bit of transparency all the way around. But you can also turn that transparency completely off and then just make it look as if you are using a non-square map frame in the uh, QGIS. So it's uh, just a question about what you want to use this tool for, or this method for. So in this video, I'll be covering some different tools, topics. So I'll be talking about using the shape digitalization toolbar, which enables me to create perfect geometry, so circles or hexagons or whatever. I'll be talking about using the advanced digitalization tool, allowing me to move and, you know, home in on getting exactly the right geometry I want. I'll be talking about using the inverted polygon style. So normally when we style a polygon, we style the, inver the inside of the polygon, but this inverted polygon enables us to style what's outside the polygon. And that's the basics of this masking. Then I'll be looking at the shape burst fill, which is the one that creates this gradiated fill. And I'll be talking about using map units versus using graphical units in all these settings in the layout, because sometimes it's nicer to use map units than graphical units and sometimes the other way around. And then finally, I'll be talking about using color map wraps in order to um, get even more control over my little uh, masking project here. So let's see what this looks like in QGIS. So in QGIS, I have um, loaded this OpenStreetMap and I've zoomed in on Roskil, which I was used, and I have set the coordinate reference system to this 25832, which is the one we used in Denmark. So that's basically what I've done until now. Then to do this, I'll be needing two toolbars. I'll be needing the advanced digitalization tool and the shape digitalization tool. So in the view, I go down into toolbars and choose advanced. Gives me all of these tools I can use to move and create rings and whatever. And then I'll also be wanting to use the shape digitalization tool, which is down here. So now I've got the two toolbars I want to do. In this case, I'm going to manually draw a shape that I'm going to mask. Often you have a layer of that information in it. So be it a layer of nature parks or urban areas or municipalities or whatever. So in that case, you will use a filter. So you only have that single feature that you want to mask so, and all the other ones to disappear. So if you do it manually or you do it using an existing layer, and a filter that will be the same process after you created the layer here. So normally I wouldn't do this, but just for the de demo video here, I will create a scratch layer. So this temporary scratch layer, I will call it mask and I'll call it a polygon and I will set it to the coordinate reference system used in Denmark. 
don't need to do any attributes and that's it of course normally i would save it into a, a geo package file but now for the demo not then i want to it comes up it turns into my edit mode so it is an edit and i'll just go and say add a polygon feature and now i've done that this shape digitalization becomes active and i can choose different types of shapes so i can choose from hexagons or rectangles or whatever i want to do in this case i want to make a circle so it's over here and i'll just do it based on two points so i want to cover this area in the center of roskill so i'll create one point there and then drag across and one point there just to move it a bit and go up into my advanced digitization tool i can choose a move feature i can click my feature and i can just move it just a wee bit like that so now i'm happy with this and i can save my chain work and take it out of edit mode the first step, you know, if you really want it simple, you could just take this layer here and then just style it with a, uh, instead of having a fill, so a solid fill, make a no brush fill, and then take the edge and buff it a bit up. And that would be one way of making the reader focus on that AI out there. Um, I want to do a wee bit more than that. So next step up will be this using the inverted polygon. So up here where it says simple, simple, single symbol, it, everything is shown with, anything in that layer is shown with the same symbol, so therefore, a single one. I want to change that to inverted. So now the fill is not inside the polygon but outside the polygon. So if I go back into my styling here and change my fill style to being solid again, there it will fill outside the polygon. And if I change my color, so I say zero saturation and 100% value. So that's white. And maybe just add a wee bit of, so ch reducing the opacity a wee bit like that. Then I have created my next iteration of this uh, setting here. So, um, and that, that could also be a usable visualization. Um, I would take it one step further and say, okay, I want to make that edge a bit gradiated so that we have a bit more nifty uh, visualization. And in order to do that, I'll now go in this next section here where it says simple fill. So we up here we change our single symbol to inverted polygon. Now I'm just going to change this simple fill, which is down here. And I'm going to change that to my shape burst. So a shape burst has well basically um three parameters: a inner color, outer color, and a range for that. Um, transition between inner color and outer color. So in a simple version, I could say I want something to be black. So and um, like that. So and then I want my outside to be white, but with a somewhat reduced opacity. This looks a bit strange because um, it fills out the full area and therefore we have this strange effects of the edge. If a matter of fact, if I uh, 
uh, move this one, you can see that this all changes. Um, to control that, we use our width and say that we want this transition to be, in this case, in five millimeters. So on five millimeters on my map, I'll go from black to transparent white. And, um, and that's okay. I am, um, but I want, and sometimes, you know, that's the thing is that if you look along the railroad here, if I zoom in, it will still be five millimeters. But of course, as I zoom in, five millimeters becomes a smaller area on my map, a shorter, shorter length on my map. So, Sometimes you want to specify this not in graphical units, but in map units, so that the distance that this transition covers is the same in map units. So I want to say, let's say 200 meters. So I change my unit here to map units and set my transition to 200. So now this transition zone is 200 meters. And if I now zoom in, looks like if it's bigger and bigger, and matter of fact, when I get so large, it starts interacting with the edge. This is the interaction with the edge, which is annoying that it's there, but it doesn't, it doesn't affect the final print, let's say like. That. So now this distance here is the same independent of my zoom but of course if I change zoom out a lot that will be in millimeters much smaller so we just have to decide or well, you know what how do we like to set these things it's not that one of them is better it's really a question about how your workflow functions for you um if you want this transition to be more complex than just going from one color to another, you can ask it to use a color ramp. So QGIS comes with a lot of different color ramps. Um, and in lots of the tools, we can use these color ramps. So also if you're using a gradated coloring, lots of different places, color ramps come into play. And um, in my case, I don't want to use any of the standard ones. What I want to do is I want to edit my color ramp. So the color ramp is this dialog box here, where um, we basically at the default have two points and at the moment is a gradiated. So it gradiates from one color to another. And sometimes in gradient maps, for instance, we would say that we'd be going from Let's say this color is going to be a red. Um, what some more value and some more saturation, something like that, to a green color. Uh, change your hue. Um, and then that, oh, that was not. Let's go back to it. <laughs> okay, that one was red. And this one over here is my green one. Thing is that that transition, because the way that we see red is a bit distorted. So sometimes we want to set in a new value. We do that by just simply double clicking. That gives us a new control point. Now we have basically three colors. And then we could say, okay, at this point, it has to be yellow. That way we can have a bit more control over the transition. But editing color ramps is really useful in many situations. What I want to do in this situation is I want to go from, let's say, a dark green, almost black, to light green, and then over into a white transparency. So my inner one is going to be, uh, let's set it green first, and then dial down the value something that is almost black. Then I want something that's relatively close to it. So I only want a very short black area. 
going very, very close to that of my light green. And then somewhere after that, let's say here, I want it to be white. So zero saturation, full value. And now I want to work with my transparency. Um, so I want to add my transparency. So I have some transparency. And what you can see is down here, I have different, I can have different things depending on what I was in. I could have the lightness, I could have the hue. So I could see how these different parameters change. So I can make smooth transitions. In this case, I just want to keep it with the opacity and then say, okay, I want uh, the opacity to be um, low and then just fade out into nothing. So maybe it will be, it will start be relatively transparent and then it will fade out and be less and less transparent, so higher and higher opacity. So let's see how that would work. Um, I have a green color there. Why did I do that? Ah, I didn't change that one to white. So um, no saturation or value. So now I have a map that has a green border. And then it surely there's some transparency just around it, and then that transparency again disappears. So you can really dial in your map layer out and how you want things to look by using these color ramps. And then of course it's just insert this in your layout and you are home free. So um I hope you like this video. I hope this will um make your maps look even greater and i hope to see you in another video so bye